Lord's a good God. Yes, he is. I want to do something just a minute before I go into the breadth of the teaching today in the ministry. Thank you, Father. Do you know that the Proverbs, the Psalms, the Lamentations, and Ecclesiastes are called the Wisdom Books? Did you know that? How many need wisdom? How many know that you can call on the Lord and He'll grant you wisdom? That wisdom is even in the gifts of the Spirit, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, there's nine gifts. There's a word of wisdom. There's a gift of the word of knowledge, a gift of the word of wisdom. Knowledge is something that under normal circumstances you can gain. You don't even need God's help to go gain knowledge. There are people that know what this says, but they don't have a clue what it means. You can go gain knowledge. But you need the Holy Spirit to give you understanding. Yes, sir. But in the gift of knowledge, the gift of a word of knowledge, that means God tells you something you couldn't possibly know without Him. Counterfeit of that is, is things like what palm readers do. And tarot cards. There's always counterfeits to the gifts of God. You need to know that. But this Word of God is rich, and in the Proverbs, it teaches you how to live. There's great words of deliverance in the Proverbs. Great words, listen. And I'm going to tell you, I, don't, I just feel like I'm going to do a whole teaching on this one day. Probably walk through the whole book. That's not today. But I feel like I want to take us through a, a couple of Proverbs, and as we walk through... That that I see in there and that we read together, which I'll read, when we see something that says it could have been a snare or something that's affecting our life, we'll just go and repent for it and do a little deliverance. And here's the deal. And I believe what the Lord, even that's just kind of coming into place right now. This is for you. Take it home. Pick a proverb a day. Just reading a proverb a day will teach you how to live. <laughs> It'll teach you things. Teach and put God's wisdom. Now listen, so you get this knowledge of what God says is wisdom. They're called wisdom books for a reason. What God says, wisdom for living. And then you ask the Holy Spirit to bring you understanding on how to walk it out. But if you'll take this home and you read a proverb a day and look at the things that God says don't do and the things that you know you've done, then repent for it. Okay? If the things that He says in here cause good things, declare it over your life. And one thing I'm going to tell you that I just, uh, you know, here we go. Thank you, Father. You're a good God. I'm going to say before I get started, devil be bound in every way in yes. Jesus' name. Yes. In every way. Yes. In Jesus' name. Yes. And Lord, get yourself glory and do what you're going to do. It's all you, Lord, always. It's all about you, Jesus. Proverb a day. There's 31 Proverbs. So that covers every day of the longest months and gives you a couple of bonus days <laughs> on the other months. But read them and learn how to live and go through your words. I said it the other day, your words your speech. You want to really sink into your soul the depths of how important your words are, it's in the Proverbs. Take a highlight pen and highlight everything that has to do with speech or words. And the Bible says the things established by two or three witnesses. I, I promise you, you'll be astounded. And that's what, for me, when, it, when I began to learn and I, you know, the power of words 
And then I did that, and that sunk into me about how we should talk. Do my words agree with God? I promise you, if you're grumbling, they ain't agreeing with God. <laughs> it's just, that's the language that invites the devil. If God inhabits the praise of His people, then I promise you the enemy inhabits grumbling and complaining. And all grumbling and complaining is against God, no matter who you're grumbling or complaining about. If you're born again, if you're born again, you have been made righteous. You know, those that say, I'm just a sinner saved by grace. Well, my Bible tells me while I was yet a sinner, He died for me. Yes. That means that I stepped over into a place where I'm no longer categorized as a sinner. I'm now a sanctified child of God who is capable of sinning that needs to live a repentant lifestyle. But if you think that you're just a trash sinner, like Carla said, those <laughs> she what she said. The preachers say, I'm not worthy. Well, look, on the one hand, on our merit, we're not. But he paid. Amen. He paid the price. Yes. Who am I to call me trash who he paid for? Yes. I mean, we need to get that. He paid. If Jesus paid for your shame and He paid for your guilt and He paid for it, who are we to keep it from Him? We're to give it to Him. He paid for it. We're, I, so everybody said, I don't want to rob Jesus anymore. I don't so I'm going to give Him what He paid for. Amen? Amen? So the words... So when I learned the power of words and then I went through that walk into Proverbs with a highlight pen, I'm going to tell you something. God is telling you over and over and over and over, watch what you say. So yes, I can sin. Yes, you can sin, but your position is the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. That's what He paid for. So on the one hand, you are grateful. We are grateful. We know we don't deserve it on our merit. That he, but he, we know that. There's nothing you can do to pay God back either, by the way, so quit trying. Just be. You do your good things because He loves you. And you love Him and you're grateful. But you're not paying Him back. That's ridiculous. There's nobody can pay Him back. There's not, there's not enough good deeds in the world to pay Jesus back. <laughs> there's not enough money in the world to pay Jesus back. There's nothing you can do to pay him back. The price is too steep. By the way, that's the value he placed on all of us too. Thank you, Lord. So on the one hand, we're humble before God. We know that it was on His choice and not our, our, our own goodness. He chose us because He placed His value. But on the other hand, to the devil, my position has got to be, listen, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You have nothing in me. And then you stay repentant. Proverb a day will teach you about words. So I'm going to start here. I'm just going to go through a couple of them and see what the Lord does with it. Proverbs number one, beginning of knowledge. The Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, the king of Israel. To know wisdom and instruction to perceive the words of understanding. To receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, judgment, and equity. To give sub subtlety to the simple, to young man, knowledge and discretion. Say, Lord, Lord. in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. For helping me to know, me to know. Wisdom, wisdom and instruction, and, instruction. And, perceive and perceive the words of understanding. Words of understanding. To, receive to receive instruction, instruction. Of, wisdom, of wisdom, justice, justice. Judgment, judgment, and equity. Yeah. A wise man will hear and will increase learning, and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels.
to understand a proverb and in the, the interpretation, the words of the wise and their dark sayings. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Say, Lord, Lord I, repent I repent for being foolish, for being foolish and, despising wisdom, and despising wisdom and instruction. And instruction. I, invite I invite you to fill me, to fill me with, the with the fear of the Lord. And now see, if you look at Isaiah chapter 11, you're going to see that one of the sevenfold spirits of God is the fear of the Lord. So you just invited him to fill you. Take a deep breath. Come on out, foolishness, in the name of Jesus. Let him go, in the name of Jesus. Go, 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 go. Every spirit that, that would despise wisdom, I break your power in the name of Jesus. Take a deep breath. Go, 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 go. Let him go, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. My son, hear the instruction of thy father, and forsake not the law of thy mother. For they shall be an ornament of grace unto thy head, and chains about thy neck. My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. If they say, Come with us, let us lay wait for blood. Let us lurk privily for the innocent without cause. Let us swallow them up alive as the grave and whole as those that go down into the pit. We shall find all precious substance. We shall fill our houses with spoil. Cast in thy lot among us. Let us all have one purse. My son, walk not in the way with them. Refrain thy foot from their path, for their feet run to evil and make haste to shed blood. Surely in vain the net is spread in the sight of any bird, and they wait for their own blood. They lurk privily for their own lives. So are the ways of everyone that is greedy of gain, which taketh away the life of the owners thereof. Say, Lord, Lord I, repent I repent in Jesus' name, in Jesus name. for ignoring good counsel for dishonoring my father and mother for ignoring the word of God I repent for everyone that I cause to stumble in the name of Jesus I repent for everyone that me or my ancestors defrauded I confess these sins I confess the sin of taking what's not mine, setting traps for others. I, re I repent and confess the sin of shedding blood, of being greedy. And I break these curses, command these spirits to go in Jesus' name. Now take a deep breath, let them go. Let them go. Come on. Out, 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 out. In the name of Jesus, let them go. Let them go. Let them go. Go, 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 go. The Lord rebuke you. Go. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Wisdom cries without. She utters her voice in the streets. She cries in the chief place of concourse. In the openings of the gates in the city, she utters her words saying, How long, you simple ones, will you love simplicity? And the scorners delight in their scorning. And the fools hate knowledge. Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make, my, make known my words unto you. Because I have called and you refused, I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded. But you have said it not all my counsel and with none of my reproof. I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear comes. When your fear comes as desolation and your destruction comes as a whirlwind. When distress and anguish come upon you. Then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. For they that hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. They would none of my counsel. They despised all my reproof. Therefore shall they eat of the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. For the turning away of the simple shall slay them, and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. But whoso hearken unto me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from fear of evil. Say, Father, Father I, repent I repent for rejecting, for rejecting the, wisdom the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. Of the Holy Spirit. For being simple in my mind and refusing the Lord. For scorning 
for foolishly hating knowledge, for refusing to be corrected, for not regarding the Holy Spirit, ignoring the counsel of God, the counsel of His Word. I break the power now of the calamity, the desolation, the fear, the destruction that comes like a whirlwind, the distress and the anguish. I thank you, Lord. I repent for hating knowledge. And I thank you, Father, for setting me free. I want your counsel. I'm choosing your knowledge. I'm choosing your ways. Lord, I thank you. I can be delivered of that bad fruit that came from my own devices. And I break these curses in Jesus' name. And now I command these spirits to go in Jesus name take a deep breath come on out destruction like the whirlwind get out get out get out in the name of Jesus foolishness go 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 distress anguish get out in the name of Jesus go 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 destroyers get out in the name of Jesus let them go let them go let them go in the name of Jesus thank you Father. Thank you, Father. Say, Lord, I will receive your wisdom and your knowledge and choose your way instead of mine. In Jesus' name. Let my ways become your ways. Become like your way. Let my way be as you want me to be. In Jesus' name. Amen. One proverb. Deliverance happened throughout this house. Just one. There's 31. So I promise you we could go on. We could, we could go on and one day we will. Okay? That's not for today. But that's for your own life. These are keys. So in essence, the Lord just delivered you a wisdom key. He just delivered you a wisdom key. If you will. Go through and repent. Jerry, many times when she's caught, she's got she's full of the Word of God, and she said, "Lord's told her when something's wrong, start repenting for what's wrong, even yeah. in your physical body." Well, it's in here; it's full of it. Right. Lord is good, Amen. Yeah. Father, we thank you for that. Let's just go and get any squatters out right quick. Ready? Y'all know what a squatter is, huh? So if you had a rent house, and somebody was in there and they became a bad tenant, and you had to kick them out, and they wouldn't leave. They're now they're a squatter. They're not paying. They don't belong there. They're legally supposed to be gone. And the devil's a legalist, so he'll stay in. And if he's got a legal right, you're not getting him out. But I'll tell you, he'll hide and be a squatter. Go ahead, Mom. I want to say, too, this is how I've gotten most of my deliverance in my 50-some-odd years of being a Christian. Is if it's something wrong with my body, I'll, look, I'll pull up all the words on them. Um, it, yeah, in the Bible, the, I'll pull up all the words in the Bible uh, on the computer or in a what do you call it? Concordance. Concordance. And I'll repent over all the body parts that are sick. If there's no, uh, if, if the, the name of the problem or the disease is not in the Bible, look up the symptom because you can find depression, you can find. Uh, fear or whatever. So look up all the words that apply to your physical condition and repent over each of them and see I've, I've repented over probably all the scriptures and Proverbs. Go through the Proverbs and go through the, but, uh, just pull up all the words and repent over them and you'll get healed. I mean, y'all got delivered just in the one chapter of Proverbs. And what, she, what she, for those that didn't hear that, she said that the most of the deliverance she's had in her life and healings had become when there's a physical problem, she's going to look up in a concordance or do a search of the Bible of the body part that's got trouble and, or the symptom and then go on and repent according to what the Word of God said we repented for being fools ignoring the Word of God ignoring wisdom and, and all of that 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 brings okay and so when that went on then 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 and you repented now here's the saying if the devil's not in he don't come out so when you start going, Ugh, or you're burping, and God, that means something was there. 
that it tells you something was there. So we thank God. Did you have some passion? Go ahead. I was involved with somebody back here that came in and, and put a curse against you and Jerry uh, in the ministry here. So, with her lead, but I come against that. Yes. The authority yes. of this house. Yes, Lord. Of this land. Yes, Lord. I come against that curse and I reverse it and send it back from whence it came yes. in the name of Jesus. Yes. And that person who came in here and curse this place. Let that curse come down on that person, come down hard, so that he knows that the Lord God is here in this place, in the name of Jesus. And let him be brought to repentance, Lord, that he would serve the living right. God, godly sorrow Father. If it's all right, I would like to specifically pray because I went out here and asked him exactly what was going on. And he gave me specifics. And let, let, let me just, let me just, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's no, okay. I mean, I mean, you know, when the Lord is is moving and, and God is really doing a work, the, the enemy will try to come yes. to derail. And, and, and this, this person was so specific in what he was saying that he literally even spoke against the building itself. And the words that he said, I knew exactly what he was doing. And so the Lord just told me to listen. And then we bind, we're going to, Pray. How many of you know that this is a God ordained place? Yes. 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 Right? And 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 so we I want you to stand up and yes. we're gonna pray right now. Yes. Right now. And if I come against every wicked word, every yes. vicious yes. attack yes. in Jesus' name, specifically because he spoke two names. He spoke against Jerry and he spoke against Randy. Very specific. So I bind every evil word of the enemy and the attack of the enemy right now. I bind the warlock spirit. I bind the witching spirit. I bind the Jezebel spirit. I bind Korah and Cain right now in the name of Jesus. And we even speak against the destructiveness of the words that was sent out and we send them back to the originator in Jesus name and father we thank you that your word will continue to go forth here in power and demonstration I come against every vicious attack of the enemy right now and father God we thank you for that that you're doing we thank you for life we thank you for the life of God that will come through the word of the Lord in the name of Jesus. And I thank you, God, for protecting your manservant and maidservant right now. And every speaker that comes and dons this pulpit right now, we bind backlash, we bind front lash, we bind side lash, every subliminal attack, we bind front lash right now, and backlash and retaliation in Jesus. Jesus name and every wicked vice of the enemy we turn it around we command it to go back to the originator in Jesus mighty name and we thank you Father God that your word declares one can put a thousand to flight and two ten thousand and it's way more than two in here right now so Father even the perimeter of this building the structure of the building we come against the enemy that would say it would be demolished in Jesus name I thank you Father God for your word and we declare your word that it will continue to go forth we plead the blood of Jesus and Lord we thank you and we praise you for everything that you're doing in this house be Lord and be glorified we pray for brother Merle and we pray God a hedge of protection around him around his family around his wife around his children his grandchildren we bind the enemy that would try to come to attack him even in his body oh God we thank you for that that you're doing continue to give him wisdom knowledge and understanding in Jesus name and I cover the workers here in the blood of Jesus I thank you for protecting Kevin and Patty and Crystal and Dan, the children and Linda. We thank you, Father God, that they're protected by the blood of Jesus. And no weapon formed against them will prosper. And every tongue that rise up, God, you said you will condemn it in the judgment. This is our heritage. And we thank you and we praise you for victory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
I take authority here every day when I'm in California. Amen. I take authority over this camp. Yes, God you. has given me, He told me, whatever you do, I'll back you. Whatever Amen. you say, you, I'll back you. Amen. Whoever comes against you, I will come against it. Now, that was prophecy by two you, different people that told yes. me that. Amen. When I took over this camp, and I come against that person, and I come against any curses, this ground is holy Thank ground. You. Thank you. Ordained by God. And I will not change what goes on here. And my son will not change what goes on here. Hallelujah. This ground was ordained by God to do exactly what we're doing, to set His people free, and that's what we're doing. We're setting His people free. We're teaching you to become part of the army of God. That's who you are. That's who that comes here. You're part of the army of God. We must be doing something right. <laughs> Witchcraft works in a few circumstances. It does work. It works if your love walks off. You're getting unforgiveness and bitterness. It can land. It works in ignorance. You have to respond. We respond with prayer. Something comes, we deal with it. You have to respond. Okay? My people perish and are destroyed for lack of knowledge because we've rejected knowledge. And clearly the Word of God shows us. You know, in the book of Acts, when they were astounded at the guy called Simon the Sorcerer, they weren't astounded because it wasn't working. Stuff was happening. But we're to be wise as serpents and harmless as a dove. So we respond and we pray. But listen, I'm going to tell you something. We win. Oh, yeah. yeah we win. Yeah. Listen, we're covered under the shadow of his wings. He's our front guard, our rear guard, our shield, and our buckler. The Lord is. Amen. Amen. And so uh, we just thank you, Lord. And I just ask you to send Christian laborers to surround that man in the name of Jesus and whoever else sent him. And we thank you, Father, that all those confederacies be broken up, Lord, and what the enemy meant for harm, you'll turn into good, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We've been... Uh, any work like this, listen to me, any work like this, and any work, even if they don't have deliverance understanding, but they're making a difference for the kingdom of God, the enemy is going to raise up agents to come in. I mean, God will use men to bless, and the enemy uses men to try to curse us. It is what it is. Any good work, I promise you. And oftentimes they come, well, that guy exposed himself. A lot of times they come as a wolf in sheep's clothing, and a wolf looks like a sheep. <laughs> you can only that. You're not going to look and find a cone hat on him, you know, and a broom. But sometimes, and we pray, and we pray before, we pray after, we always pray, and we pray that only who's supposed to be here comes, and nobody comes here who's not supposed to be. And sometimes they show up mm -hmm. as wolves in sheep's clothing. But I'm going to tell you something. God is a merciful God. Yes, he is. Sometimes he lays so look, it's like Gary said, if something's going on, why? God's the way he allows it. Right. So sometimes he allows it to see how we'll handle them. Are we going to be moved? Are we going to be scared of the devil? Are we going to walk in hate? But sometimes he does it to also just because maybe these people who are hell bound, going to hit the pit, can encounter some people that do walk with God. And maybe their eyes will be open and they'll see and get saved. Either way, we're going to move forward and behold the glory of God. Amen? Right. Amen. Spirit of trauma today. I usually come with a lot of weapons. Sometimes I know what, what I'm going to teach when I get here. Sometimes I don't. But God has a plan. And I, and I believe this body today needs to hear this message and be healed. And I pray, Lord, that you make it fresh to those that have heard it before. 
and that Lord anything that needs uncovering gets uncovered and that Lord your healing virtue flow throughout this room and you show yourself mighty as our deliverer who comes from Mount Zion that is you Amen. Jesus by definition trauma is an overwhelming life event that renders one helpless interfering for his or her life Trauma overwhelms abilities to cope and is outside the range of normal experience. Traumatic experiences typically take place beyond the parameters of collective consciousness. It, it, it remains often in the subconscious mind. Sometimes you have traumatic events and you've got them so squashed way down. I mean, they're, they're down, 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 and, and even forgotten. But it affects you subconsciously. Trauma can throw into question and destroy healthy beliefs about God, yourself, and others. Trauma is an emotional response to a terrible event like it is a disaster, uh, an accident, a molestation, a violent encounter in your home or against you. Immediately after the event, sometimes there's shock and denial can be typical. Longer term reactions include amnesia, unpredictable emotions, flashbacks, strained relationships, and even physical symptoms, headaches, nausea, and beyond. How many know when something very traumatic happens to you, you, you can get fear come in you? And if fear is in you and your hyperthalamus is engaged and your adrenaline uh, is flowing when it's not supposed to, your, your whole body is under stress even in your daily life even without something extra going on and even the world as you research uh, there there there's a guy named Henry Wright's got a book called more excellent way and they they've doc that's not the world but he's a pastor and they've documented a lot of people they pray for and the spirits that come with certain diseases and and uh, you know about 80 percent or more is fear stress and then the Mayo Clinic, scientifically. When you go back and look through what they say, 80, 85% of disease is caused by stress. And I would present to you that if you're stressed, you're not at peace with God. Something's wrong. It can be normal and it's a normal human reaction to deal with things and move on. But let's look at some specific causes of trauma. Someone could have made you very upset, afraid, or shocked. Serious injury. There's trauma that is a emotional trauma. Bam! Somebody says something. Blow to the chest almost. They might as well hit you with a hammer. Something you saw something that was spoken but trauma can also come from a fall violence in an accident car wrecks and you know I've gotten to where I don't like the word accident much because that denotes something that happened by chance come on. Come on. Uh, and I promise you two cars don't collide by chance the enemy got involved He's the author of confusion. Yeah. There's a cosmic chess match going on. Cosmic chess match. Now listen, it's not to see who's boss of the universe. Come on. <laughs> That's God. He's not to be dethroned. It's not even a close battle. Be listen, shortest battle in history, I promise you. And even pre-recorded history at any time was when the devil tried to ascend above the throne of God. God flicked him out. That's not a battle. The battle's for the souls of men and women. The chess match is moves being made upon the earth that requires agreement from men one way or another. Okay? That's why it's so important that we agree with God and not the enemy. Not just for our own lives, but collectively for the body of Christ. And then collectively again for the lost people. Because if we don't agree with God, they're in trouble. Come on. We're in trouble. They're in trouble. Amen. Amen. 
Oftentimes with trauma, there's amnesia as a defense. Research has shown that individuals respond to overwhelming trauma by using a variety of psychological mechanisms. One of the most common means of dealing with pain is try to push it out of awareness. Some label the phenomenon of the process whereby the mind avoids conscious acknowledgement of traumatic experience as disassociative amnesia. I'm going to tell you, when I do studies like this, sometimes I go find out what the world says the symptoms look like. Because the symptoms are there. But then we're going to look at it from the viewpoint of the spiritual realm to see what to do about it. Because there's something better than medicine. <laughs> something far better. A more excellent way in the Lord. Other use terms such as repression, disassociative stock, tra state, traumatic amnesia, psychogenic shock, or motivated forgetting. All that aside, there's a near universal scientific acceptance of the fact that the mind is capable of avoiding conscious recall of traumatic experiences. Amnesia has been reported in combat, for crimes, for concentration, concentration camp experiences, and torture. Evidence of this process can be found in the early literature of World War I and World War II. Now they call it PTSD, post-traumatic shock syndrome, stress syndrome. But that's for, and it was something just put on people coming back from war. But, but now they're placing that for all sorts of events. Stress is stress, shock is shock, trauma is trauma. And by the way, what was trauma to you might not be so traumatic to the next person. Mm -hmm. Vice versa. It will be seen that certain disturbances are common to all, varying from complete obliterations of the past to small parts of it, that the process forgetting of forgetting of the scenes that are occasioning and following the shock. There could be severe headache, mental conditions varying from slight depression to severe stupor. We have seen people, I've seen people that it looks like they're just numb. They're not on any pills. They're not on anything else. They're just totally numb. They may be walking and they may be talking, but it's not much and there's not much response. And it's, it's like dead emotion. Listen, our goal is to put our emotions under the Word of God, Amen. not to become dead to emotions. I want you to hear that. We have emotions. God gave us emotions. But they have to be in order. They have to be in balance. And they have to come into subjection to God's Word. But if you walk around not feeling, you're not going to love anybody. And fear ain't going to be conquered. You're going to walk in fear. Even if you're numb. You're just afraid of feeling. We've got to get healed. At times, there's a strong disinclination to talk of the forgotten periods as if it were being actively inhibited or suppressed rather than as if they'd been disassociated. I remember one time when I was a young man in the 20s that uh, um, actually it was my brother-in-law through a marriage and his dad had been to the Korean War. And those guys that went to the Korean War, they didn't talk to anybody for the most part. If you knew about the history of the Korean War, they were put up in places to fight the Chinese, and the Chinese come across the border in waves after wave after wave after wave, and they were put on machine guns, and the amount of people they killed was just... And right in front of their face, it wasn't like firing it. In, in most cases, it wasn't... Not that any of that would not be... would be stressful no matter how it had to happen or, or, and bring memories and, and haunt you without Jesus, but these guys... Uh, saw who they were shooting. It wasn't shooting in the jungle. It wasn't. Shooting. It was man. They were coming over the hills and there, and this guy could never even talk. 
In many cases, whenever the memories disassociated from the normal personality were revived, they accompanied by an outburst of emotion, sometimes of frenzy, but generally of fear. It is natural to thrust aside painful memories, just as it's natural to avoid dangerous or horrible scenes in actuality. And this natural tendency to banish the distressing is especially pronounced in those whose powers of resistance have been lowered by the long-continued strains of trench life, the shock of explosion, and other catastrophes of warfare. Now that's talking about warfare on a battlefield. But listen to me. Some of us have been in trench warfare your whole life. Mm -hmm. Your home growing up was a war zone with no peace. Some people molested early and they were their target. Bam, 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 bam. Over and over and over. And some are still in the war without peace. And I'm going to hear it to tell you, I'm here to tell you today, God wants to take you out of that war. Get you in the Get you, get you out of the war that'll be with yourself, that'll be that 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 you're getting beat and put you in a place to where you're actually you're still in the war, but you're fighting the battle and you're winning the battle because you're in Jesus. Everybody say, Lord. Lord. I'm not staying in any trench, I'm not in any trench that, the that the devil put me in. I'm coming out. Okay. In Jesus' name. In Jesus. People can encourage you to forget and move on. And there's obviously a need to move on with life. But listen to me. Without the healing power of Jesus, you may move on, but you're still attached to the event. You're attached to the people. And you have the spirits that invade with every traumatic experience. I'm talking about... Holocaust survivors who as children hid from the Nazis. It says as children they were encouraged not to tell but lead normal lives and forget the past. The most pervasive preoccupation of child survivors is the continuing struggle with memory, whether there's too much or too little. Oftentimes people can't remember. I don't even remember the, you know, I'm not saying for me, but you'll hear people say, I can't remember the first 10 years of my, I don't remember what happened between 5 and 15. And if you're getting too much, you're getting a replay. Something for me, it just brings it back. For a child survivor today, an even more vexing problem is the intrusion of fragments of memory. Most are emotionally powerful and painful, but make no sense. They seem to become more frequent with time and are triggered by thousands of subtle or not so subtle events. Here's a quote from one. So much of my childhood between the ages of four and nine is blank. It's almost as if my life was smashed into little pieces. The trouble is, when I try to remember, I come up with so little. The ability to forget was probably my way of surviving emotionally as a child. Even now, when anything unpleasant happens to me, I have a mental garbage can in which I put all the bad stuff and forget it. I'm still afraid of being hungry. I never leave my house without some food. Again, I don't remember being hungry. I asked my sister and she said we were hungry. So I must have been, I just don't remember. So this particular lady couldn't even leave her house without food. Had no memory of being hungry, but something inside of her was causing her to make sure to take food with her. Trauma will work to maintain the open wound for demonic activity, including confusion. Insecurity, betrayal, dissolution. Say, Lord, I break the power, Lord, I break the power. of confusion. <laughs> confusion. Insecurity, Insecurity. Betrayal. betrayal, and dissolution. And dissolution. <coughs> Thank you, Father. <coughs> Thank you, Father. Cases of trauma open up the individual for sexual abuse, bullying, domestic violence, indoctrination, alcoholism, addictions. Seeing death can bring spirits of death and terror and fear of death. People go up and get upon and speak. Listen, so you get policemen. You get ambulance people. You get, you get firemen to get upon scenes that are horrible scenes. And sometimes they dream. 
about those things. So they're tormented at night or they get visions. I had a man tell me that he called me aside. He was a pastor and he was a chaplain in the police department and he got a call from uh, to go out to a place where a man had committed suicide and when he got there it turned out to be a good friend. Oh, oh Jesus. And obviously he saw blood. Mm. And six months later, if he saw something that looked like blood, even in food, it was triggering. When I prayed for him, we broke this and that stopped. But sometimes if you see, listen, so even moving forward, we're going to do deliverance here, right? But I did this, and I believe, Lord, because he, the goal, we want you to keep coming back here. We do back here to be a blessing, continue to get deliverance. But the goal is that you walk out your deliverance at home. Amen. Amen. That's right. And you teach others to walk out their deliverance at home. Send them here if they come here. Bring them here. We're delighted to help. But the goal is that you walk out a life of freedom. Amen. Whether you ever come back here or not. The goal is the kingdom. So if you see something that you shouldn't have seen, and listen, this listen, it's a whole other subject, but if you're if you see somebody's body parts that you shouldn't have seen, ask God to remove that vision. We live in a world where things get displayed that don't need to be displayed. You see some traumatic, an accident, something happened. Father, I just thank you, Lord. We exchange these images for the image of Jesus Christ. That'll save somebody some night problems if you get it. These are these are computers, and far more powerful than any computer. Okay, we we have untapped. We're not even tapping into what the brain can do. And praise God, we can't because it would be a terrible thing for Jesus coming. You, you hear me? But it's still whatever you see is there. And sometimes the enemy, if he can find a weakness in you, will pull that up. We can get rid of it. Seeing death can bring spirits of death and terror and fear of death. So I break the power of spirits of death and terror and fear of death. Trauma can be replayed emotionally even if the memory is repressed. Certain events can trigger unexpected anger with the danger of anger always present. Triggers can bring fear resulting in panic attacks. Undealt with trauma can bring numbness. I explained that earlier. Or the need to be numb. So nothing's dealt with in the spiritual realm with Jesus, with the power of the Holy Spirit, so, but you don't want to feel that way, so you got to take something to numb you. Oh, there's that anger just on the surface. Just on, I mean, I'm telling you, it is, it is there. Maybe it's a bit, but boy, bam, it can come up at any moment. Sometimes the root of that is trauma. Emotional flatness, that's that numbness. There can be a preoccupied, distant, coldness, despair, loss of self-esteem. There can be replay. Instead of shoved down and hidden, there's replay. You get images, spells, tags, images brought back. It's called replay. We break it in Jesus' name. Say, Lord, Lord I break the power of any emotional flatness, being preoccupied, being distant, being cold, in despair, I break the power of every spirit that would take away the value that Jesus placed on me at the cross. I break the power of paranoia, sleeplessness, insomnia, in the name of Jesus. I rest in you, Lord. Shock can follow a traumatic experience and bring its own stupor, anxiety, overactivity, agitation, impaired judgment, confusion, detachment, depression. 
Say, Lord, Lord. I break the power of shock. Stupor. Anxiety. Anxiety. Overactivity. Overactivity. Agitation. Agitation. Impaired judgment. Confusion. Confusion. Detachment. Detachment. And depression. Depression. In Jesus' name. name. Thank you. Luke 2.32 A light for revelation of the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. That's Jesus. John 12, 46, I have come into the world as a light that everyone that believes on me may not abide in darkness. Mark 4, 22, for there is nothing hidden which shall not be made manifest, nor does any secret thing take place but that it should come to light. The Lord can bring things to the light, but you've got to let Him do it. You've got to let Him do it. Told, I told everybody who was in here Thursday night, if you come in here, come to the table, be honest. Let God show you things. How many know He's for you and not against you? Amen. That you can trust Him? Yes, sir. Here's the problem. If it stays hidden, it never gets dealt with. Amen. And you keep repeating. Things have to come up. There are some times and some people that are so hurt that their process is longer than others in what God will reveal. Okay? Because here's the deal. If you were in the military and you went out and conquered some foreign country and you, you conquered that, that land or even if it was your own land, you took it back, but there was 20 million people there and you had 200 to guard it, you'd be in pretty bad shape trying to keep it. Okay? So, so it, it's so it is with us. We got to take territory and then and then hold it. You got to take territory. Your territory is lies. I'm I'm going to put it to you now. You've got a whole picture of deliverance in another realm. Uh, if you had a or another analogy, if you had a house and the house had many rooms and the house has an owner, doesn't have two owners, has one owner. So that house either belongs to the enemy or belongs to Jesus. When you become born again, the house belongs to Jesus. But it's got many rooms. And in some of those rooms, different compartments of your thought process could be occupied by the enemy. So it's like if I go and rent a hotel room, well, while I'm in that hotel room, I turn on the lights, I turn off the lights. I turn on the TV, I turn off the TV. I control the air conditioning, I don't, I turn, I get this up. The owner of the hotel doesn't do it. Come on. So understanding that in your house are places that even though the whole house belongs to Jesus, there can be places where certain rooms, the enemy has varying levels of control. So the gospel, the good news, has reached the house as a whole. The good news is that there's an answer for sin. And He is the Savior. And we've accepted Him and we've received Him and He's taken ownership of the house. But maybe that good news that He's your healer hadn't reached the healing room. Mm -hmm. That He's the deliverer hadn't reached that room over here. Or maybe parts of the, this room, you know, this room's got fear, and this room's got anger, and this room's got rejection, and maybe fear and some rejection has been dealt with, but that anger room is still there under enemy control. So we want to get these rooms cleared out. Amen? Yeah. 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 Hidden wounds bound by trauma manifest in unholy actions and hindrances that prevent us from being all that we can be in Christ. The Lord is the light who shall bring up these hidden works of darkness. Everybody who will say, Father, Father I'm asking you for the power of the Holy Spirit to shine His light down into the depths of my soul and expose any place where trauma has wounded me, where I've been wounded. And trauma is set up along with these other spirits. Expose the enemy. 
So he can be routed. His works destroyed. The demons cast out. And I can be healed. I give you permission. In Jesus' name. Matthew 7, 7. Ask and it shall be given to you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened to you. My question to you, and I believe you just answered it if you prayed with me, but are you willing to ask, to seek, and to knock? You know, this kingdom of God is one in which He does, <laughs> it's all about Him. It is. But at the same time, it's about the choices we make. Do I give him access? Do, do I confess? I have, we have to agree with him for his kingdom to move in our life. Amen. Will you ask him? Will you keep seeking? Will you keep knocking? We have a friend and she has an exercise she does and, and I believe it's a good one, but she'll just say, uh, Lord, Father, would you show me what lie I'm believing about myself today? Yep. What well, lie yep. am I believing today? I think if we did that every day, we'd probably get an answer every day. Because this thing is deep. But we can get freer and freer and believe less and less and less and less of His lies. We need to ask the Lord to show us any open wound left in our lives. When there are open wounds, we face the issue of commonality. That means you can be affected by spirits similar in nature to what has invaded our wounds. We need to give Him permission to heal us and ask Him what we need to do as part of the healing. We just did this. But I want to explain to you commonality. That same friend of ours, she, would, she was a nurse and she traveled around through East Texas and she had this one place as a clinic she'd stop in and when she'd go in there, it had a Buddha in there. And every time she'd go in there, she'd come out, she'd be sick. And about the third or fourth time, she said, Lord, why? What is going on? Why am, am I getting sick in there? And the Lord brought an instant image to her doing yoga when she was 16 years old. See, she had something in common. So it could affect her. When Callie, my wife, and when she first came to me, then uh, she was a crack addict. And I didn't know she was going to be my wife. That's another story. But the, and, and, but the Lord... Um, uh, used me to help get her delivered. And in those early years, he did. He delivered her from crack. He delivered her, and we began the process of walking out our deliverance together, especially after we got married. We found out, I found out how undelivered I was. But uh, anyway, uh, but, um, but she was delivered of the crack. The demons were gone. She wasn't addicted anymore, but she wasn't fully healed of the wounds. And so at that point, when we would drive through a crack town, how many know that if you've been down a path, you can kind of sense when things are going on there? Okay? Mm -hmm. It's because they're familiar spirits. You know what that feels like. They're in that town. So when we would drive through a place that was a crack town, in the early years, she wanted to get out of here. <laughs> Let's get on out of here. I like the way this feels. But once she got healed, now we can drive through town. We just pray for her. Mm -hmm. I know what it's cracked down to. I know it's a mess down. No, I, I mean, I know. Even though I wasn't cracked yet, I got to know by the Spirit of God, I can feel it. I know. But you got to get healed of things. If all we do is get the demons out and you don't get healed of your wounds, the demons are going to reinfest the wounds. We need both. We need to be healed. We need delivered. And if and by the way, if you were to get some kind of healing, didn't get the demons out, they're just going to tear the wounds back open. We got to have both. There's a place sometimes, man. God can heal. Bam! Instantly, things change. Sometimes you got a part to walk out. So everybody in this room, if you're here, maybe you got an issue you're still walking out. <clears throat> Ask God what I need to do to help. Me. What's my part to do to walk this healing out? For some of you, it's tell somebody else you're sorry. Humble yourself. 
for somebody for some of you it just means pray some some people some toxic you don't need to go tell them you're sorry but maybe you need to pray for them every day and every time you go oh, pray for them and you know what I'm talking about oh, don't you when you think about their name or what they did oh. <laughs> or you start telling somebody and all of a sudden your face stuck on them those are signs we look for them you know huh? and we look for them I mean we hear somebody start telling a story about the injustice done to them and boy when they're and all that's going on well you're not healed your spirit soul and body spirit soul and body once you get born again the Holy Spirit comes and lives in your spirit now you have a right to walk out the privileges of God and get free you have a right he's giving you benefits I don't want to neglect his great benefits but you got you have the privilege of starting to walk out freedom so we can repent we can cast out demons listen to me cast out demons but you're gonna to have to choose to do something different that's going to involve your body in order to be free it takes all of it and the body part is sometimes simply, I'm not going to cuss you when you talk ugly to me. I'm going to turn around and go over here. I'm going to say, oh God, forgive me. Forgive me. I'm going to turn around. I'm not going to eat the extra plate of Chinese food. Okay? Or whatever. If you're going to get delivered to cigarettes and we pray and we cast those demons out, if you're going to keep those cigarettes in your car, you ain't going to get free. You're not going to stay free. You're going to smoke them. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. sir. It's crucifying the flesh. That's where we have to make choices. So listen, if it's an anger issue, every time you choose not to return evil for evil, you're offering your bodies a living sacrifice to the Lord. Thank you. But there may be something specific. Listen, those, those are actions that you have to take as part of this walk. And listen, the more you dominate the enemy, the more you say no, the more you just say yes to God and no to the enemy, the more you begin to dominate him, the less you're tempted. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean he quits tempting you, but the thing you used to have to fight every hour on the hour, now it's every three hours. And then you keep doing it and it's every five hours or ten hours or every other day or once a week. Because you begin to dominate the enemy and the character of God is formed inside you and He doesn't have the common thing with you. The demons are looking for something in common yes. so they can make you into their character. Yes, sir. They, want to, they want to impart their character into you. Mm -hmm. We can get free and freer and freer. We need to apply the blood of Jesus to any remaining open wounds as the Lord takes us through the process. Say, Lord, Lord I, apply I apply the blood of Jesus, blood of Jesus to any wounds Jesus. that I have, that I have. In, Jesus in Jesus' name. And I thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord for healing me. For healing me. I, submit I submit to your process, to your process. and your timing. One of the things that happens to people is they get these demons, we cast these demons out. Hey, we're trying to give you instruction. Crucify your flesh. You've got to go walk it out. But you're going to be tempted. And sometimes you might fail. And if you fall for the lie that ain't nothing changed, I'm just doing it. Listen, you're changing. We're a process. You just... You put your boots back on, pull up your bootstraps, and you go back to work. Walking it out with God. He's doing a work. Say, Lord, Lord you haven't started a good work that you're not going to finish. Matthew 18, 19, Again, I say to you that if two of you shall agree on the earth concerning any matter whatsoever, it may be that they shall ask, it shall come to them from my Father who is in the heavens. I'm asking you, body of Christ, right here. Do you agree that trauma and all associated spirits have to go? Yes. I'm going to ask again. Do you agree yes. that trauma and all associated spirits have to go? Yes. All right. 
if we have agreement. Ephesians 5 8, for you were once in darkness, but now light in the Lord. Walk as children of the light. Are you willing to walk in the light? Yes. yes. I'm going to ask again. Are you willing yes. to yes. walk in the light? Yes. Okay. Let's pray. <coughs> you don't have to bow your heads. We're going to go through deliverance now. But we're praying together, and you'll be getting delivered as we pray, and then we'll call demons out. We'll just pray with me. Some of you that have hung your head in shame all your life when you pray, you need to start looking up. Amen. This is okay. It's, it's a sign of reverence to God. The Bible never told us to do it. <laughs> Nowhere. That I can see. You, you know it's in there. Show it to me. I'll, I'll change the statement. But I'm not saying it's wrong to bow your head. But listen, some of you that have walked in shame, you need to be looking up. Because your Father is the glory and the lift of your head. And He's not under. He's up. Amen? Amen? Thank God He's in here. Holy Spirit. Dear Heavenly Father, Dear You're the God, God of Abraham, Abraham Isaac, and Jacob. Isaac and Jacob. All glory is Yours. Glory you're my deliverer. You're my shield and buckler. You're my front guard. You're my rear guard. I come to You now. In the name of our awesome King Jesus. And ask you as a little child for your light to shine into my life. Lord Yahweh, in Jesus' name, I'm asking you to reveal the open wounds from trauma and shock in my life. I'm asking you for healing. I'm asking you to show them to me. Because I'm a child of your light, not of darkness. I'm asking you to show me what I need to do as part of the healing process. I'm asking you for your strength in Christ Jesus to help me as we walk this out. Now listen, I just you just said as we walk this out. You're not alone. This is not a journey without help. We're walking it out with the Lord. Where I have sinned, sinned, myself, myself. As, a as a result of these wounds, I take responsibility, I take responsibility. And, ask and ask for the gift of godly sorrow, of godly sorrow that leads to repentance. Leads to repentance. I declare in advance <laughs> that it is my choice, is my choice of my will, my will to forgive everyone, to forgive everyone including myself. Thank you, Lord, in advance for your love and grace in granting me victory over darkness. I thank you, Lord, that from this day forward, trauma will not be the glue that binds wounds open and demons together as trauma has no place in me. I bind the strong man signed against me in Jesus' name. I apply the blood of Jesus to any open wounds. I bind, I break all demonic, satanic, luciferian shields and seals. I submit to your Lordship, Jesus, and believe that according to Luke 10, 19, You've given me authority over all the power of the enemy. I believe you have commanded me and all believers to cast out demons. I agree that as these spirits are called out, that they all have to leave, whose legal rights have been broken, even the squatters, and all that Jesus wants out of me today. I agree, I agree that all similar spirits, all similar spirits to what's called out, what's called out and, all and all that are working in agreement, in agreement with what's called out what's called have, to have to go. I believe that God, believe that God my Father in Heaven, Father is for me, not against me. And I believe where the Spirit of the Lord is, the the there is liberty to do the same.
Son sets free is free indeed. I receive the salvation and deliverance of the Lord. Say, Lord, I break now all unholy soul ties with everyone who traumatized me in word and with deed. And I break unholy soul ties with everyone involved in any other trauma in my life. I send their souls where they belong. I call mine back to me, covered in the blood of Jesus. I command now every spirit transferred in the soul time to go in Jesus' name. Now take a deep breath. Let them go. Let them go. I now separate trauma from the following spirit. Amnesia, disassociation, shock, suppression, severe headache, frenzy, fear, lurking fear, paranoia, insomnia, nightmare, terror, horror, stress, severe stress, moderate stress, trifling stress, painful memory, flashback, replay. Now get out, all of you, in the name of Jesus. Take a deep breath. Come out, trauma. Come out, trauma first. Get out, trauma, in the name of Jesus. Get out, get out, get out, get out, get out. Let them go. Let them go. Fear, lurking fear, paranoia, insomnia, nightmares. Get out. Terror, horror, performance. Get out, in the name of Jesus. Get out. Stress, stress of every kind. Get out, in the name of Jesus. Go, 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 go. Let them go. Let them go, in the name of Jesus. Bullying. I break your power. Physical abuse. Child abuse. Get out. Sexual abuse. Get out. In the name of Jesus. Verbal abuse. Get out. That are the words of their parents. Father's words. Mother's words. Husband's words. Wife's words. Get out. In the name of Jesus. Ex-wife's words. Ex-husband's words. Get out. In the name of Jesus. Go, 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 go. Violator, go. In the name of Jesus. Every blow to the chest. Everybody say, I take this hammer. Every hammer. Out of my chest. In Jesus' name. Take a deep breath. Let him go. Let him go. Go, 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 go. Incest, go. Unclean, go. Molester, go. Violator, go. Insecurity, go. Confusion, bipolar. Get out, get out, get out. Double-mindedness, get out. In the name of Jesus, go, 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 go. The Lord rebuke you. In Jesus' name. Now get out anger. Get out seething anger. Get out agitation. Get out betrayal. Get out revenge. In the name of Jesus, go, 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 go. In Jesus' name, go, go, go. Take a deep breath. Come on, let him go. Let him go. Let him go. Say, Lord, I renounce all fear. Unforgiveness. Jealousy. Shame. Fractured identity. Rejection. Self-hatred. Numbness. Emotionally flat. Dazed. Despair. Hyperactive. I command all these spirits to go. In Jesus' name. Take a deep breath. Come on out, fear. Come on out, anxiety. Come on out, panic. Come on out, terror. Get out, get out, get out, get out. Numbing. Emotionally flat. Stunned and numb. Get out. In the name of Jesus. Shock. Day. Despair. Hyperactive. Get out. In the name of Jesus. Depression. Unforgiveness. Bitterness. Hatred. Jealousy. Murder. Shame. Get out. In the name of Jesus. Go, 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 go. Lost identity. False identity. Fractured identity. Rejection. Come on out. Self-hatred. Come on out. Give a deep breath. Get, 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 get. In the name of Jesus. Death go. Death from seeing death. Say, Lord. I ask you to exchange every image I've seen of death in any form, in hospitals, in accidents, in the funeral homes, with anybody, anywhere, exchange the death for the image of Jesus Christ. And I break the power of death. I break the power of trauma that holds death in. Command death to go. Now go. Get out. Death, trauma, trauma, and death. Get out. In the name of Jesus. Death from sin. Death. Death from wages of sin. Death from loss of the loved one. Bondage. Control. Witchcraft. Sorcery. 
manipulation, rebellion, domination, bullying. Get out, Jeff, in the name of Jesus. Let God's people go in Jesus' name. Go, 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 go. In Jesus' name. Say, Lord, I'm asking you, send your angels, your warriors, to swing their swords and cut out any remaining spirit, any stubborn one, everyone you want out today in this ministry right now. They have to go in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I thank you that as you do, I'm getting free in Jesus' name. Take a deep breath. Come on. Out, 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 out. Lord, take your angels, swing their swords, cut out those toe holes, tendrils, grips, spikes, hop, spin them to split, multiply, clone. Get out in the name of Jesus. Let God's people go in the name of Jesus, especially the shame. Especially the guilt. Everybody say this. Say, Lord. And look, it's like a cloak on your head. It's just, put, listen, it's just all faith. Say, Lord, I take off shame. And I give it to you, Jesus. It doesn't belong to me. Now take a deep breath. Shame, let him go. Shame, go, 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 go. In the name of Jesus, go, 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 go. Shame and a shame. I break your power. In the name of Jesus, go, go. Can't believe I acted like that. Get out of there. In the name of Jesus, go, 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 go. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Raise your hands if you would, church. I speak life to God's people. I ask you to cleanse your body of any toxins and chemicals released through trauma. Say, Lord, cleanse me of the toxins and the chemicals and restore damaged DNA. Heal my immune system. Erase the unholy pictures and the words and the sensual memory. I ask you, Lord, to remove any disorder, disease, disharmony from my body. I receive healing in the name of Jesus. Cleanse my skin. Cleanse my eyes. Cleanse my ears. Cleanse my heart. Cleanse my lungs. Cleanse my, my lungs. Cleanse my liver. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I believe by your spirit you can help me to love you with all my heart, with all my mind, with all my strength, and to love my neighbors as I love myself. Now take another deep breath. Let them go, let them go, let them go. Now I command every bit of trauma, shock, terror to come out, come out of their muscles, ligaments, tendons, bones, marrow, heart, lungs, liver, kidneys, bowels, spleen, pancreas, appendix. Get out and out of the reproductive organs in the name of Jesus. And Father, I thank you that you shut off improper fight or flight and reset the hypothalamus, Lord. Reset the amygdala in the name of Jesus. Come out of their eyes. Come out of their nose. Come out of their ears in the name of Jesus. Go, 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 go. Pour out your spirit. Raise your hands one more time. Father, I thank you for pouring in your spirit. Pour out your spirit on God's people. Fill them void. Fill the voids up, Lord. Fill them with your glory. In Jesus' name, fill them with your love. Say, I receive it, Lord. I receive your healing. Lord, I thank you that you heal my heart. Every place it's been broken. Heal my soul. Heal my emotions. I give you permission to reorder me and build me, make me just like you want me. And I trust you in the process. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Father, I thank you for your people. Thank you for the willingness to let you be God in their lives. And Lord, I thank you that your promise is that you reward those who diligently seek you. And I believe they've come here diligently seeking you. So show yourself strong, Lord. Show yourself mighty. You're mighty in battle. You've already been doing it, but I thank you, Lord, to hear exceedingly, abundantly more than we could hope or ask for. So, Father, I bless them. I bless them. I bless your people in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I bless them, Lord. I thank you your name is on them. You put your name on them, Lord. You show them your face. That your love flows out and they know how much they're loved. 
They know how much they're cared for. And they have their hope and their purpose in you and the plans that you have for their life, Lord. And each one will grab a hold of the fact that each one in here is a difference maker here on the earth. Salt and light. I thank you that their families change, their marriages change. And no place and no thing is hopeless as long as you're the God of Israel. And you're a big God forevermore. You were God in the beginning. You are God before there was even what we call a beginning. And you're God all the way through. You are holy and you're mighty and you're powerful. And we love you and we bless you. And I thank you for your anointing that destroys the yokes, even ongoing, Lord. Even ongoing. And Father, I ask you to bless the food here. Bless the food. Bless the fellowship, Lord. Let the saints love one another, Lord. Let, let our words be words that magnify you in all that we do. And Lord, I thank you that, that within each person here will be the sure knowledge that their words matter. And, and the quickening of the Holy Spirit if something's being said that doesn't need to be said. Both here, at dinner, the days to come, and the rest of their lives. Let them be life speakers. Release life into the atmospheres in their homes. Release life over themselves. Let God arise, Yahweh, and the enemy be scattered in Jesus' name. Amen.